and welcome. Welcome to something that we don't often, or as often as we should show you on our YouTube channel. Um, welcome to a beautiful air-cooled Porsche. Now, every year we get the joy and pleasure of tuning some of these cars. And uh, because we don't really show them, I thought I'd take the opportunity uh, to show you this particular car. The car has been completely rebuilt. It's a 1979 Targa SC and a wonderful job uh, in doing so done by Juan's Auto Service, our long-term friends and partners. Uh, we work with them uh, on tuning these cars and setting them up for EFI. Now, I mentioned EFI and I mentioned tuning because as these cars age and as they get rebuilt, you gotta ask yourself, well, you know, what do I wanna do in terms of the engine? in terms of the fuel setup, in terms of the air intake, and so on. Do you want to stick with a CIS system, or do you want to go to something that's more modern? And this is what we have in this car. So it is a 3.2 liter engine. Uh, it is uh, completely redone, fresh, by Juan's Auto and uh, it is super clean, it is bone dry underneath, which is exactly what you want, and it is set up with one of the Razen kits. So Razen is no longer, the original Razen is no longer making uh, these kits. Uh, however, this is one of the, the last ones uh, that have gone into a car, and it's a very nice put together EFI system with individual throttle bodies and a plenum up top here uh, with the air filter pointing backwards. It is a 3.2 liter. Uh, it is, uh, has a slight, uh, a slight cam to it, but the beautiful thing is that the injection system is modern, so modern fuel injectors. Uh, the ignition system, coil unplug, is modern and you know the sensors and actuators you've got a, a a crank position of course and you've got a cam position sensor uh you've got the um, engine air temperature you've got a wide band l2 in the exhaust uh this is our wide band for for tuning it on the dyno but the whole system has been modernized and and this is going to improve the performance of the car it's also going to improve the drivability but before you get all those improvements, these cars need to be tuned. You see on our channel a lot of the tuning that we do on modern cars where all the drivability has already been done, has been dialed in by the OEM, and we mostly focus on the performance aspect of it. In this car, you have to start at a more basic level, set up the electronics, set up all the sensors and actuators, which has already been done here, then you have to tune a lot of the drivability. And believe it or not, the drivability takes longer to tune than the outright power. Because this engine is so fresh, this car has been brought in here now to do an initial drivability tune. So the car drives as it should, and then the owner can take it and can enjoy it while they break in the motor, and we're gonna do a final power tune. It is, uh, the, all the electronics are driven by an M 800 Motec ECU. It is an older uh, gold box as, as they're known, Motec ECU, but it works just, just fine. Uh, uh, you can now use a more modern Motec in these cars and uh, uh, other ECUs as well. And there are quite a number of kits out there. Uh, we've tuned a number of different ECUs for these cars. Uh, the Motecs are very good. So what I want to do is I'm gonna step you inside. I'm gonna show you kind of how we go about tuning the drivability of this car and show you some of the some of the aspects of tuning the Motec. So let's just jump in and uh, we'll, we'll give you guys some insight. Uh, we've connected to the ECU here, the, the Motec, and uh, I'm just going to wait for these uh, this O2 sensors to warm up here, our Lambda reading. So there's our Lambda reading right now. And um, the, the basics of tuning uh, a car like this is to dial in your fuel and your spark uh, and, and to make them work well together so that the car drives smoothly at all times. So this is a fuel table here that, that we're looking at and this basically correlates your throttle input. You can see that this 
uh, arrow here jumps as I'm throwing and uh, you can see also that the uh, uh, the, the red box here jumps around this table. So this is based on RPM and your throttle input. And what your goal is, is to make, uh, first of all, target the correct lambda uh, for the particular engine that you're working with. And then you want to make it target as close or rather to reach as close to your targets as possible. So what we've got here is you can see the green line is our target and the red line is the actual lambda that we're getting from the car. So using the dyno, um, you can also see the air fuel ratio here uh, in, uh, that we're reading from the dyno itself. Uh, and we're mimicking driving this car on the road. So this is you know, us taking off in first gear. And uh, these kind of spikes are normal when you're tipping in and out, but you want to bring the car and the engine into a steady state operation and traverse this table as much as possible. Higher loads, lower loads, uh, different RPMs. You're looking for smoothness in the response, which this car has, but you're also looking at your steady state target. So we're gonna go to third gear here. We're just watching this red line and you can see as I'm varying the throttle and setting it, it gets very close to that target the green line. Now there is wideband feedback which will help you out once you dial in this table. So if we go to the spark here, it'll turn on the, uh, the feedback right here based on the O2 sensor. So if there's any sort of deviation, then this takes care of it when we're very, very close to that target. And we spend a lot of time. We spend actually, it, it, it takes a lot longer to tune a standalone ECU versus an OEM ECU. The difference is you gotta do, tune all your drivability. On the OEM ECU, you always struggle like, oh, am I missing a table? What's the ECU doing right now? Those are the questions that you kind of have to ask yourself on top of like, what do I want the car to do? On the standalone ECU, is much simpler. The software leads you to what you wanna do. You wanna change fuel, okay, here's your table. You wanna change timing, here's your table. So that's, that's much simpler to find on a standalone ECU, but the nuanced tuning is the part that takes much longer. Cold start, driving, transitions like this. So now, now that we've done this on the dyno, there's another important component is while the dyno is very good at replicating what we'll be seeing on the road, we should also be taking this car on the road and making sure that there too, it's smooth, it drives nicely before we call the drivability aspect of the tune done. So without further ado, let's go for a little ride and ensure that the car is driving just as smoothly as these graphs indicate on the road as well. Third gear, rolling the throttle. Oh yes. I can already feel that torque surge. Oh, I'm so excited for the customer, Kevin, uh, getting this car back and just enjoying the rest of the braking process. And then uh, the car coming back and us really dialing in the rest of the power man. Because, yeah, just a good amount of torque. 3.2 feels so nice and tight. Yeah. So, there you have it. A little glimpse into tuning an air-cooled car that's been modernized for EFI and a little glimpse into tuning the Motec. Now, this is just a small glimpse into it there's there's quite a bit involved but we've had the opportunity to to tune a number of these cars quite a number every year we, we tune some um, and uh, of course we've had the opportunity to tune quite a few uh, Motec ECUs in other applications or other standalones so sometimes we get this question hey you guys do a lot of flash tuning do you tune standalones absolutely we do 
Absolutely we do. We've got the, the equipment, we have the experience, and uh, if there's something that we can help you out on your particular project, whether it's something that's air-cooled like this or water-cooled, standalone, not standalone, anyways, give us a shout, stratify.com, subscribe to this channel for more cool builds, for more fun stuff. And we'll see you on the next one.